we talk a lot about people having a toxic effect on us, but what we don't talk about is are we being toxic towards other people? It can make you self-conscious and not feel very good about yourself because someone literally feels like you have a toxic effect on them. Sometimes that'll be on them. Like if someone's intimidated by you, it could be because of their own like mental kind of battles that they need to work through. But a lot of us do have ne negative impacts on one another. Sometimes there's things that we may not think about or things that we may not be sensitive to that do matter. I feel like it's really important to have people know that it's okay for them to have had a toxic effect on other people as long as they're doing everything in their power now to correct it. And that might include apologizing to some people. That might include just staying out of people's lives and kind of giving them that time and space to breathe and be themselves, depending on, you know, how we affected them. But, like, a lot of the times, it's not intentional. Sometimes our effect on other people that is negative is just how negative our own thoughts are. So sometimes we need to separate ourselves, kind of get our own thoughts and our own ideas and opinions back in order, be a little bit more realistic, a little bit more positive, um, and that just kind of cleaning up how we think about ourselves, how we see the world, a lot of that can honestly have a much better impact on everyone else around you because you can change so much about how you see the world without changing your circumstances and by just focusing on your thoughts and your perspective and what you choose to believe and put out into the world. I did also want to say that kind of along the lines of everything I've already mentioned, it's going to take a lot of action and intention and a lot of the times in spiritual growth they kind of make it seem like let things just kind of happen or it just kind of falls into place or accepting where you, where you are that's an essential step but there's so much more to it than that and you're gonna have to be intentional and focus on actions like a lot of the times you know people will say just manifest it just think about it and yeah that's a huge component I mean I have vision boards all behind me like obviously I I find it important to know what I want, to have certain goals, to kind of visualize those goals, and I think that that's great, but at the same time, if I just spent four years visualizing and I didn't do a single thing to start a website, I didn't make a single video, I didn't plan a single piece of content, then I'm also not going to be a successful YouTuber if I haven't started a channel and all I'm doing is thinking about it, you know what I mean? I feel like saying that all you have to do is visualize things and manifest them kind of waters down the concept of visualizing because I think that it is really important and it is really impactful and you have to know what you're working towards every day. I think saying that, you know, all you have to do to make things happen is visualize is really damaging because it a, waters down visualization and it B, potentially keeps people from focusing on the action as much as they do the, the intention. And the next thing that I want to say is that you are going to be consistently uncomfortable. Like everything that I've mentioned so far in this video from, you know, knowing if you're toxic or negative towards others, knowing how much you complain and how much you really bring other people down, um, you know, having to actually focus on action and not just be able to wish yourself to the top. Like all these different things are uncomfortable. They're not fun. They're things that push you out of your limits. They push you out of your comfort zone. But at the same time, that's what this journey is. You know what I mean? Like there were so many things on my journey to making a YouTube channel and creating these videos on a weekly basis. I wasn't expecting to learn. Like I wasn't expecting to kind of have this whole world jumpstart me back into fashion and art and inspiration and beauty and style and interior decor. And I had to like be able to, you know, feel comfortable with my image and how I portrayed myself. I had to learn how to take better pictures and have, like, actual, you know, skills in terms of, like, photography and videography, which I'm still learning and still working on. Like, there were so many things that you wouldn't ordinarily think of when you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel that were huge parts of my journey. And if it wasn't for this major goal, I wouldn't have discovered all these small goals along the way. There's going to be short-term goals, there's going to be long-term goals, and there's going to be things that you never even consider that you have to work on that are integral, important parts of this journey. And you have to get really, really, really comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's the only way that you're going to be able to survive on this journey. And yeah, of course, you can take a rest break, so you can take time to collect yourself, but you do need to realize that you're going to be uncomfortable and you have to be okay with that. And that's why it's so important to have a strong support system. Um, if I didn't have, you know, my boyfriend and my friends that I talked about, you know, personal growth and all of that stuff with, I don't know where I'd be. And, you know, having multiple different people that I can talk to or people that can relate to me about things in different ways and people who 
always tell me that they have my back. Like that is huge and so, so important in this journey. And I honestly didn't have that before. And it has been incredible just to see how much more I can give to my relationships now, how much more I can get back from people that are genuinely invested in me being a better person. Like all of these things have been incredible and just making me feel so much more secure and so much happier as a person. And um, I really encourage you to to keep working on this journey and to keep digging because if you're not friends with people that would support this or you're not friends with people that would really get it, then that's okay. You're going to find them along the way. You just have to stay committed to this journey. And honestly, I didn't even think that I could. I was like, all my friends have left the state or that have left the country. Like there's no way that I can reconnect with other people and start these connections all over again. But Honestly, like the universe has your back. It'll place people in your life. There were people that I reconnected with that I haven't seen or heard from or talked to in years. There are people that I made completely new friendships with that I now see every couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, it's it's crazy how you'll find these people and how you'll meet them. But if you stay dedicated and getting out of your comfort zone, it's going to happen. And then kind of along that same line, I did want to say that it is really, really helpful, especially in the first stages where you maybe don't have those friends or don't have that support, to find places where you can be supported. So, you know, YouTube channels, podcasts, maybe even certain TV shows or documentaries that you really enjoy. Um, sometimes it can also be music, like really good lyrics that you just... I don't know, just really associate with and really mean something to you. Having those little different things that kind of speak to you and kind of calm you down and bring you closer to that person that you're trying to be, those are really, really helpful. I found so many different like teachers and resources in the spiritual growth arena that I was able to kind of identify with and that had something different to say. And after, you know, all of that, I was able to learn so much. I was able to figure out where a lot of my ideas come from, where a lot of my perspective comes from, and I realized how easily I, I can actually change that and how much of it is in my control. And so before you even are able to find new friends along this journey and are able to find, you know, people that support you if you don't have that yet, these are all great resources, and especially podcasts and audiobooks, just feeling like someone's sitting there having a conversation with you and just telling you how it was for them. The Perfectionist Project um, by Sam Laura Brown, that's absolutely amazing. I definitely listen to Super Soul Sunday sometimes, so obviously the Oprah podcast. Also, the Girl Boss podcast was amazing. That's kind of more entrepreneurial, but you still get to hear lots of auto autobiographies, so that was great for me. And then along the lines of learning more, realizing what I could do, being a better person, then I was able to attract more people in my life. I used to feel really nervous about changing that much as a person, and it's okay to disconnect with people. It's also okay to change, and that's just kind of part of this journey, but you also don't have to do a total 180. I mean, I felt like I was really different for maybe a year, and now I'm kind of more like my old self, but with like the mentality and the habits of a better person. So it's not like I lost my personality. It's not like I stopped being who I was, but I'm just a little bit smarter and more responsible and more caring and more self-aware. And that's great. You can be a better person and still not, you know, be boring or not have to stick to these certain habits that you do every day. Like, it's still about finding you. It's just being a better version of yourself. I think that's important to remember. Like, your personality will go up and down. And the last thing that I want to say is that I know that I do see this a lot online is, like, the kind of idea that healing is not linear and it kind of goes up, up and down and blah, blah, blah. But you really do kind of go back and forth and back and forth. And it doesn't mean that you are completely back to making terrible decisions or whatever, but, you know, you'll have some days where you don't feel that different, and that's honestly how healing is. Like, you kind of are back and forth, and that's okay, um, because that's just life, and you just have to learn that it's a commitment. Like, self-help and personal growth is a commitment that you make for basically your whole life. It doesn't look a certain way. You can decide what it looks like for you. You have to keep searching and keep creating and keep trying until you find what that correct is. And at the same time, you're going to find different ideas of what's right at different times in your life. You know, what's right for you when you're 25 or 26 isn't going to be what's right for you when you're 37, but that's okay. It's all about recreating that and staying committed to what's going to help you thrive and what's going to help you feel alive and what's going to help you, you know, care for other people and care for this world more because you're getting everything you need to be your best self. And that's what it's all about. Other than that, I love you all. Happy healing.